What's going on everybody? Um, it's your boy Dakota and I'm back with another vlog video. In the last video, I did a vlog about um, recent schools or upcoming schools that I would be going to, attending, to be sent to, to help my URB out, to get me some promotion points. That way your boy can get promoted. Um, I'm sitting at like a little under 200 points. Now, yes, I've been in the army for four and a half years make it five but really i got out for six months but my time never stopped it only stopped for those six months because i wasn't active all right hold on i'm going through the gate you know so we got to play it cool we got to play it cool these people be tripping sometimes how's it going hey what's going on bill all right now you be safe you too have a good one <coughs> Anyways, uh, <coughs> I apologize, um, but those um, upcoming schools that my unit was going to send, not just me, but other people to, and uh, one of the schools was Airborne, Eloda, Seaburn, and there's an armor school. Now, I want to get as much schooling done as possible within the Army, you know, get the certifications for them, um, get the... Uh, actual school date for them or the actual uh, seat sit in school so that way I can have more than just 88 mic and 31 echo right now um, the deployment was only two months for me uh, we still got people downrange and we didn't really see action um, and in the very beginning I was a little bit nervous I was scared to be honest because they wanted us to leave all of our electronics behind. They didn't want us to bring any electronics. Um, like we was banned from bringing them. And of course we had people still bring them. And even one soldier, right before getting on the bird, as they were waiting to get on the bird, she pulled out the phone in front of the company commander and that caused the whole scene. Now, I wasn't there for that. Um, this was the second group of people that left. But the first group of us left a week before them. So, um, she pulled out the phone, whatever, caused a big issue. And the commander ended up, like, taking all the phones. But there was so many phones and electronics that he said, just put them away. Um, next person who hands it out gets an article. Uh, pulls it out gets article 15 now that's a bit excessive but understand that there was supposed to be no electronics in the first place now it got to a point when they actually allowed us to have electronics because we wasn't really doing much we all thought that we were going to go to combat you know like go straight to germany or not germany my bad but straight to ukraine to help push back the Russian forces. Um, with that, we never stepped foot into Ukraine. We got close, we went to the checkpoints set up behind Ukraine, inside Poland still. And if you don't know, Ukraine is trying to join NATO and Russia doesn't want them to join NATO. So that's why he's invading Ukraine to stop them from joining NATO. now. To me, that doesn't make sense because why would you invade the country you're trying to stop from joining NATO? Like, but back in the day, uh, I guess Russia believed that Ukraine was a part of them. And they did this before in like 2008 or something. And they didn't succeed. And they're still not succeeding. But our whole point was to go... Um, a, uh, what was it, uh, aggress and deter, or deter and aggress, or whatever our little mission name was, or deployment name was, um, but Poland, to me, for the two months, two and a half months I was there, um, it wasn't all that bad for, like, the first, what was it, like, it was, like, three weeks or four weeks in, so around a month, um, Things were pretty stressful because we were going on back-to-back -back missions. Um, 
whether it consisted of going to the checkpoints or coming from the checkpoints or you know picking up food supply ammo from the checkpoints or picking it up from the G2 whatever we while well, I had to do a lot of those missions now all those missions were actually good for me because it helps me get my driver badge you know because I definitely drove at least two or three thousand miles over there I was on almost every mission that came down there was one mission where we had to go through all the checkpoints and I ended up doing like 500 miles in one day because it was 200 miles there oh no it was like two it was like 235 miles there and 235 miles back so if you round it up it's near 500 miles that I drove in one day it took like 18 hours for us in those vehicles um I got to do a little bit of training such as I went to the range in Germany at Camp Casey and I got to shoot the 249 the 240 and I also got to shoot the Polish weapon, um, the equivalent of the 240, 249. I forgot the name of it. I don't remember it that well. Or I don't remember it at all. Um, I got to do a Seaburn uh, training with the Polish where I got to run through the fire uh, in the gas, well, not a gas chamber, but I got to run through the fire um, the fire was like all around the obstacle of course it was it was nitrogen gel and it burns up at like 25,000 uh, 2500 degrees or something like that um, it was like all black smoke and it was actually a really fun thing to do um, it didn't last long uh, we got there and it was kind of like okay this looks boring because there was like it looked like a killed, uh, children's playground um, it had a small little building that was like supposed to be a maze and then they had like a tunnel and they had a cylinder cement block that you can crawl through and then there was like a ditch where you jump into to, to go into the cylinder and then you had to like balance on these uh, cement uh, squares and and like one foot at a time whatever and then there was one where you just crouch and go down and then come back up and the whole time the file was actually like close to you so you had to like stay nice and tight keep a low profile and get through the maze and the obstacle course essentially um other training i did was uh, cross training MOS's um, I got to learn about the UAVs the unmanned aerial vehicles but it got changed to uh, um, um, I think it's like UAMs or something because it's not really a vehicle a vehicle requires a person inside of it uh, manning it so um, or UAD for a drone and it was just a UAV, you know, like if you play Call of Duty UAV, it shows the enemies, but you know, it's not the same as Call of Duty, obviously, like it's live feed. Um, I got to learn about that aircraft and the bigger v uh, aircraft, um, the big, so like there's a small little drone UAV and there's a big ass drone UAV and that one can actually carry like two hell missiles on it, I think. Or hellstorm missiles or whatever hellfires hellfire hellfire missiles and i thought that was pretty cool um i got to do eod explosive ordnance disposal training um that's 89 delta and we got to try on the big juggernaut suit that's supposed to protect you from bombs um i got to play with the little rover that diffuses bombs or finds bombs and items um it's really cool that I got to do that. Um, and then we just did regular army training, um, you know, porn security, um, 
ambushes, uh, reactor contact, uh, convoy um, operations, um, nine line medevacs. Um, that's about it. That pretty much sums up um, like the army side of Poland and all the training I did. Now we got to go out. Um, so when we got to go out, it was kind of nice. You know, I did, uh, I was like one of the first people who went to the kids orphanage and I met this little girl um, and her sister and her mom. And they were actually refugees from Ukraine who fled and they came to Poland and they went to this, um, to the orphanage. Now the orphanage opened up two refugees uh, running from Ukraine, you know, because of the bombings and the killing and the war, essentially. Now, when I met this person, she was attached to me the whole day. And it was sweet because she didn't let me leave her site. She didn't want me to leave her site. We played games. We played basketball. We did hopscotch. We did, we did a lot. Um, it was really eye-opening uh i've never been to an orphanage so to me that looked um pretty it was pretty rough for me to go to because i couldn't imagine not having family or leaving my family behind in ukraine to fight a war um some of those kids there were mainly refugees from ukraine and a lot of them were left behind um or left behind someone that they knew um most of the kids didn't come out uh, they were shy but the ones who did were still timid because they saw uniform and you know PTSD is real even with kids and you know I couldn't imagine being attacked um, on my homeland you know having bombs sent to my house to my country like just it just it's just really scary that they have to live with this for the rest of their lives, not knowing if the mom or dad's okay, or brother, or uncle, or sister, or cousin, or whoever. Um, but yeah, the orphanage, I got to do a lot with the kids there. We, I went like two times, um, definitely pretty fun. Um, the second time, I actually, we went and stopped off at the mall and the chaplain and everybody else who went bought a lot of presents slash gifts for the kids so that way they can see we're trying to help them that we're nice that we're not the enemy and we really just help them out uh, we bought basketball soccer balls footballs um, some people bought like coloring books like legos uh, they had this huge lego it was like a mansion that you build and that one cost like $80 uh, no it cost like $150 there was a Harry Potter one with the castle um, and that one cost like $300 and the chaplain and a couple of the higher officers actually bought those for the kids to help them consume time on concentrating on playing and being a kid instead of worrying about the war that's going on so it was really fun to do that um i went to different cities in the um country um mainly what i did was just you know go out spend money whatever i got clothes i went to the mall um dr strange 2 came out uh the new Doctor Strange, the new Batman came out. I still haven't seen either or um, I haven't really been to the movies that much. Um, those um, the kebab places out there are really amazing. Um, I would recommend any kebab place. They give you big portions because in America we're so used to fast food and it's like just grease and you know not really good for you. And over there, it's healthy. Like, everything is healthy. Healthy, healthy, healthy. Um, and then you get big portions. 
big portions. Like, I couldn't even eat it all by myself. So I had to, you know, I gave up food to those in my platoon, squad, or just in my company, company who was with me, or I just saved it for later uh, when I got back to our little area where we were at. And I gave it to someone who hasn't eaten. Um, I went out to a theme park. Um, that was like the best thing for me. Like we spent like six, seven hours there and then we had to go back of course, but um, it was called uh, Energy Land. And that place was such a good, good time. Good time with all my friends. Um, that was actually a week before I left, though. Um, but it was fun. It was a good way to end the deployment, you know. Got to ride rides. Got to have some food at a theme park. Um, I won a prize, but obviously I didn't bring it with me. Because um, I, just, I just didn't have enough room. Um, I bought a lot of outfits because Poland is cheap with everything. Like, the currency is like 22 cents of our currency. So, for like $10 in US would be $40 of those, which is uh, Zoltis or Zolati or, yeah, Zolatis. Um, so, every $10 is 40 for them. So, there was a big gap of the pay. And it looks like it looks like a lot when you see 2,000, but 2,000 is really only like 110. Or no, that's way more. Um, it's like I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not good at math. Um, but you like don't if you ever go to Poland, if you see like 300 is a lot, you don't go racing in your mind like okay that's a lot that's a lot no it's that's only like 40 bucks 50 bucks of us dollars now to some people that might be a lot but it's really not um that's about it um i had a lot of good times out in poland but i'm glad to be back in the states it's way better i'm with my family um i missed my son's first birthday which was which got me depressed and it made me really, really want to leave so bad. Um, but I'm back now, can't complain other than I'm getting overworked now again, of course, because everybody who stayed behind was the ones who were broken on a profile and couldn't deploy. And um, since I've been back, I'm like one of like two drivers who can actually get in a vehicle and drive so i've been going out on every mission here i've been doing all the road tests for the vehicles for the days um i've been doing the trailer road tests and now we're doing layouts today so i hope everybody has a good time um this was just a vlog to reiterate the training um and then my deployment and that's about it um stay tuned you know, I'm going to keep doing vlogs. It might not be as often as I wanted it to, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to keep keep bringing topics, um, whether it just be like multiple trainings and then I just re-elaborate re on them, or if it's just like a field exercise and or FTX, then, you know, I, I can talk about those. Um but that's it for now y'all thank you for um thank you um yeah just thank you <laughs> um i hope y'all have a good day i hope everybody can take this and you know use it for the future deployment if they ever go to poland um make something happen with this video you know whether it be like what or things I can do out there, whatever. There's a lot to do. Um, there's a lot to see. Just go out, have fun. Uh, don't be stupid. We had people that were stupid. But I'll catch you on the next video. Make sure you tell somebody you love them. All right, peace.